do not sell the outcome. Here's the biggest takeaway. Everybody, it's everywhere. Sell the outcome, sell the outcome. You're selling the outcome and then you got to back it up and go, this is how the journey is going to go with this. So we're selling the journey to the outcome. Kick it. Strata Stories. My name is Thomas Schreiber and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Strata. Strata is a single EMR platform and revenue cycle management service for physical, occupational, and speech therapy practices that helps you achieve 99.99% reimbursement rate. On today's episode, Paul Singh, the CEO of Strata, talks with Jerry Durham, a PT and the CEO of the Client Experience Company. Jerry helps practices craft incredible patient experiences that help grow your revenue. Paul and Jerry talk through what the first 45 seconds of a new patient call should sound like at your clinic, understanding who the end user is versus who the decision maker is when selling your PT or OT services, and why the insurance company is not your customer and the importance of disconnecting from the payer source. If you'd like to learn more about Strata and see how our EMR and RCM works, head over to stratapt.com to book a demo. Now, without further delay, here's today's episode. Founder convinced a bunch of uh, smart investors to give him $500,000 to build AI, ML, and all sorts of stuff to uh, improve the clinician's ability to document, da 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 And, like, I think he got on the call with me thinking that I was going to, like, be super excited about this and want to integrate it into my EMR. And where the conversation went really unexpected for him was I was like, what? who do you think I sell to? Like, you know, and there was this like fundamental mismatch, you know, he's like, well, the clinician saves an hour. I'm like, I'm not debating that, but who do you think cares that the clinician saving that, that hour? Cause the practice owner doesn't, <laughs> you're trying to sell a piece of software to the practice owner who doesn't care, but for better or for worse, they, I mean, they might say something different publicly, but, but at the end of the day, like they're not going to spend money on software to, to, to help you get an hour back of your day. Right. And so anyways, just like a heart, I think it was not what he was expecting from this call. And I'm sure I'm going to not get any more referrals from that other person that you probably know. So, <laughs> so, but, but, but at the same time, it's like people have lied to him. People have convinced these founders to, that the real problem is like documentation and all that stuff. When actually the real problem is getting paid. That's the yeah, real problem, correct. Correct. you know? And, and so anyway, I could keep rambling about this, but well, you know, it's well, just- this is so two things. Inside, so you got this and I agree with you. And by the way, I've run into this um, within the last year or so, right? Decreased documentation time. I'm like, who's buying that? Right. And I'm like, cool. Now you're going to have a bunch of PT providers, employees, just for, because by the way, right. Employees who are going to say, we're really excited about this. And the owner's going to go, I'm not right. It's like, who is, right? And it's being sold to the wrong, well, I'm going to say, right? It's being sold to the wrong person, right? It's like selling something that people would, I don't, I don't know, whatever, but they're selling I, it to I, the wrong person. Well, I mean, it, it, it kind of lines up with like kind of, for example, what you're doing, right? Like the, and I, I don't mean to paraphrase, but just to kind of no, um, right. Right, tell people what you do, but it's like, at the same time, you know, people at the front desk, probably don't think they need your help. And even if they did, they don't control the budget and they're not going to cut the check to you to do it. So you you could like yell from the top of a mountain all day about how front desk people should be better. But the truth is you just need to go after the practice owners. And, and you know, and that's the key is like understanding that when the customer is different than the user or the person paying for it is different than the, the user. user. Well, here we are again, right? And by the way, there's a five below on the East Coast, right? Of which you probably know. And I didn't know until I got out here, right? So five below understands their the payer, but they also understand, right? So they understand the relationship because it's and where they put their so I, I learned a little more about where they'll put their uh shops. And they put them in malls like next to Home Depot. Why? Because dad's driving up to Home Depot with the kid in the car. And the kid says, dad, can I go into five below while you run into Home Depot? And dad says, yes. Why? Because he only has to give him 10 bucks, right? So they understand the relationship between yeah. who's paying and who's, right? They understand that ecosystem. I, I love that example when I learned about that. And I'm like, that's brilliant, right? So they're not going to put a freestanding store in the middle of nowhere where, where 
Well, they might, but that's not the primary model, right? It's, it's you roll up somewhere where they know the parents are going to be going somewhere else and the kid's going to go, I'm going to run over here. Give me $5, yeah. give me $10. Yeah, it's smart. And, you know, and actually I shouldn't say it's smart. It's unromantic about how they make their money. Yeah, you are correct. They just, right, because they don't bullshit anybody. They know exactly how it's working. And, and, and I think some of the most successful companies in the world will tell you that they're not any smarter than you and me. They're just unromantic yeah. about how they make their money. And over and over. And that was, you know, that was part of my journey was walking in a room, people with more zeros behind their name than mine. And we all sat down in the room. I'm like, holy shit, it's the same thing. Well, you know, I was, I was just talking to um, this guy, Zane, who's on our podcast pretty regularly now. And, and, um, uh, is, since the time you and I last chatted as well, like here's the example I gave him. I said, um, uh, so I've got four kids and my youngest is just, not, he's been a little out of sorts this week. And so finally on Wednesday afternoon or something like that, I, I, you know, we took him into urgent care and, you know, of course, you know, uh, has your insurance changed? Like, no, I just came in with the other kid last week. No, it did not change. Come on. All right. And then, okay. You know, da, da, da. um, and so what I was saying to what Zane and I were talking about was, this idea that all these like entrepreneurs in the healthcare space are just trying to sell AI and ML and jargon and blockchain and whatever. And I, as a patient, you know what my biggest challenge was aside from that? Like, like when I go to pick up my kids right now at the end of the day, uh, normally what happens is two days a week, we're going to use Instacart for curbside delivery. And I don't know if you've ever used that, but I can say I'm on my way and it turns on location services on this phone. And they know that, oh, Paul's two minutes out. Somebody gets the bag out of that fridge and puts it in the back of my car. Holy cow, makes my life so much easier. I have spent, I am not proud of how much money we have spent at Wegmans now because it's right next to school and Instacart just makes it easy, right? And so now where I'm going with this is the next challenge I had as a patient was I'm sitting there in the treatment room Okay. And, and there's a point to this. So I'm going to get you fired up, Jerry. So now I'm sitting there in the treatment room with my infant, like this one-year-old, right? And because he's not feeling well, my other three kids are at home with my wife. So what, you know, she says like, we're all just trying to survive here, you know? So now she's texting me, Hey, how's it going? Have you heard anything? Da -da. But now, now let me give you an example. When I hop in an Uber, I can click a little button that says, share my trip. And now she doesn't have to ask me, Oh, I see you're right there. Right. But like throughout that visit, the, the, the tech walks in and checks blood pressure and uh, the record was getting updated on the fly. And I should, this is network effects. Like, you know, something, let's just use Facebook as an example. Years ago, Facebook made this statement that if you signed up and, and connected with three or four of your family members right away, you were likely to be an engaged user for life. That's called the network effect where you get more and more utility out of the network why aren't practices actually using something like that? Because me as a dad walking in, you know, my wife is going to ask how the kid, the visit's going. What did the doctor say or whatever? And if you could use that as an opportunity to get on her phone and let her watch the visit in real time, you now have two people that are emotionally subscribed to your brand. Okay. Now I'm not even to the part that pisses me off yet that I'm, I'm curious how you think about it. All right. So at the end of the visit, uh, he says, oh, you got double ear infection, which by the way, took 10 seconds. It took me longer to walk in and talk to the front desk than for him to actually say, oh, double ear infection. Dude, All right, can, man. Paul, we, we yeah, he goes, uh, rabbit hole another day, right? When we talk yeah, about so innovation goes, in healthcare, right? Yeah. So then he goes, Paul, uh, listen, uh, I see you got CVS over here on this street. Um, you want the prescription sent there? I'm like, yeah, sure. Think about that for a minute, by the way. Amoxicillin is the same everywhere. Harris Teeter Pharmacy, CVS, Pharmacy, it's all the same. It's a commodity for the most part, right? But somehow that CVS got my thing. Now, this is the part that's cr crazy to me. So now he sends that electronically. They don't do paper prescriptions anymore, right? He sends it electronically. Okay. Uh, as a, a consumer, a normal consumer in America, if you tell me you've sent something electronically, I am tuned to believe that that means it's pretty much instant. <laughs> okay. So now I drive to that CVS on my way home. It's 10 minutes between me and urgent care. Five minutes of CVS. I get there, get up to the counter. I've got this screaming little baby. You know, I just, I'm a dad. I, I want to make him feel better. Uh, hi, um, you know, night watch urgent care. Oh, we might have to bleep that out. But urgent care says uh, uh, that they sent the amoxicillin here. Um, lady sitting there typing. Oh, uh, 
when did you do this? And I was like, oh yeah, about five minutes ago. It should have come in already. He goes, oh, no. She goes, oh, it's already come in. Uh, we have a four hour turnaround time usually. And I looked at her and I'm looking around this room and there's nobody there. There's nobody there. It's 6 p.m. The place doesn't close till eight. There's nobody there. And I'm like, are you telling me you're not going to do this till tomorrow morning? She's like, no, I'll do you a favor. I'll do it now. I'm like, you fucking do me a favor. Okay. So here's the part that now rubs me the crazy part that, that, that I think you're going to get. I think this is where you shine. All right. So now, finally, out of her graciousness, I get my amoxicillin. CVS knows everything about me. They know that I'm the adult. I pick this up for a minor patient. They know that it's supposed to be delivered every 12 hours to the baby. Why don't they just text me? Hey, thanks for picking up your amoxicillin and, and you know, CVS branding and all that stuff. Press one if you want us to send you a reminder every 12 hours. Press two. By the way, you can text us at any time, you know? And like that to me, when I come back, I, I was thinking about you through that whole experience. Now I'm all of a sudden thinking <laughs> about Jerry Durham all the damn time. So I now I'm thinking it, about too. you because... Because here's the thing. Now I'm going to bring it back. To, I'm going to say this one last thing, and then I'm going to let you talk. You just mentioned Five Below and Home Depot, right? I will admit right up front that there's two kinds of families in the United States. You're either a Lowe's family or a Home Depot family. We are a Lowe's family. But I made a mistake one time. I bought something from Home Depot. But check this out. Home Depot understands that what they sell is a commodity. And when they text you, you know how when you buy something, it says, do you want your re receipt via text? They, this is an Apple iPhone right here and it's fully branded. They're using Apple's messaging for business and fully branding this thing. And I can chat for support. I can get my receipts. I can do all this stuff. They've made it so easy that it's almost easier now to do this than to go to Lowe's. And I guess where I'm going with this is, is I'm kind of curious where your head goes on this is like, you know, you've got your business there and I, I want to let you talk about it, but like, You've got your business there that coaches these front desks into like asking less worse questions. And, and in the pre-show, before we hit that record button, you talked a little bit about essentially a book that you've got. And I, the way I would describe it, and I'll let you talk, is like, it's a book of like the stuff you've heard people say, the, maybe the common mistakes and the stuff they should be asking. Now that I've said all that, I want to get you fired up. Like what, what are those common mistakes? You know, I don't want to call anybody out, but what are the common mistakes that front desks or actually, let me rephrase this. If there's a practice owner listening to this right now, what would you tell them to do right now? Like after they listen to this, when they go back to their front desk, like what, what are the top three things they should probably do or say or implement right away? So number one is going to tie back to, I didn't think you were going to tie this back to the front desk, but it does. And the difference between the urgent care the CBS from the five below from the lows is urgent care here. Check this out. Get ready. And we talked about two customers already. The urgent care and CVS don't understand the business, the, the uh, difference between their two customers. And actually I would argue urgent care and CVS has made a mistake in believing who their customer is. And I'm going to go back to, this is what the, we can talk about this if someone wants, or it'll come up. There's a disconnect. I, I was introduced to this term, and it's used across multiple ways, but I was introduced to this term, and I cannot give the person credit because I don't remember who, this agency effect. In healthcare, we've lost agency because we have that fucking middle fucking issue called the insurance company. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. there is a disconnect between how I, I got to tell you when, when I finally put this together, this was probably tipping point number three in my career and this disconnect that yes, this is the person who pays me the money, but they're not my fucking customer. That's the insurance company. Every, every PT, every healthcare practice in the world will tell you the insurance company is my customer. And I'm like, you are a hundred percent wrong. They are a middleman employed by your actual client and customer called the patient. And actually it goes back to them because they're paying the premiums and we could go back to the employer is, is the cu ultimate customer. So this agency effect of which we could talk about five below, right? There is the kid comes in to buy, but there's this middleman, the parent, what they do, they call it five below. All you have to do, they, 
Five it, Below got it. They put it in their name. The person holding the money is going, oh, I got to give them five dollars. Cool. So they, they fuck Five Below but understands healthcare better than we do. So let me go yeah. back to answer your question now. So I, I think that's really important. Everybody wants the action. What do I do on the call tomorrow? I'm like, without the purpose, without the why, you're never going to do it. So this is why we got to talk about the agency effect. This is how we have to talk about, because every, I love what you did there with Home Depot and the customer. And I'm like, the reason CVS doesn't do it, they don't respect the actual customer, us, us, you, the dad sitting across from them. They don't respect us because they are, they believe that there's this connection with the insurance company that they don't understand. The third party payer, let's just say third party payer. There's no... There may be, I challenge people all the time. There's no other industry in America, I don't know around the world, in America where the disconnect between the actual receiver of the product and the deliverer of the product, there's no company in America that has a bigger spread than healthcare. And what I tell people all the time is, here's our current situation. Client, insurance, company, business. My, my job is to put this insurance where they belong behind your customer. So it's you and the client. So back to your question. Number one is disconnect from the payer source. You must dis right? Hello, Paul, right? ABC Physiotherapy. This is Jerry. How can I help you? Hi, my name's Paul. I have some low back pain. I want to get scheduled for physical therapy. By the way, Hi, my name's Paul. I want a 530 dinner reservation. Hi, my name's Paul. Do you have this product in your company? Hi, Lowe's. This is Paul. Do you have two by fours? Right? It doesn't matter. Hello, Paul. Right? My name's Paul. I have low back pain. I want to get scheduled for physical therapy. One of two things happens in 75 to 80% of my calls. The next question, after some will acknowledge, some will most don't. The next question. It falls within the second or third question, 80, I will say 80% of the time will kick it up because it falls between second and third is how, you know, what insurance do you have? How are you going to pay? And we've had this discussion. So a number one thing you must do on money is get your team to disconnect from payer source. We're going to do it later in the call. I'm not saying don't ask. Paul, you keep calling yourself what a blood sucking capitalist. I am. Dude, in my political life, right, I'm very left of center when it comes to human issues. But when it comes to money, man, I am I am on the right hand side with everybody else. And I'm right, with you. my employees want to get paid, right? Coincidentally, right? Everybody wants to get paid, but nobody wants to ask how we do it. So we got to disconnect from this pair source, E number one. And that is if when I pull that book out and I take you through all those calls. I'm going to lowball it at 80 that I'm asked, how do I want to pay? And mostly it's what insurance do you have? Which, by the way, how do you know it? I don't know if you saw my post this week. It showed up in Facebook memories. I hate Facebook memories. But every time I open it, there's something I want to save. Right? So I try not to open it too much. But there was a post from four years ago. I wake up. That tooth is missing. I find a dentist locally. Hi, my name is Jerry. I got an emergency. My tooth fell out. I need to sell you someone. Great. What insurance do you have? I said, um, I can give you my insurance, but I need to get in. I'll pay cash. Literally verbatim. We can't do that. So that disconnect, right? That it was. So think about this. I will pay you my hard earned. I almost said the actual word. I will pay you my hard earned of money. So you will, which by the way, you guys notice I said four years ago, you see, it's still yeah. not fucking fixed. Um, I will pay <laughs> you my hard earned money for your services. We don't want your money. That's literally what they yeah. said to me. So, so, so like what's what, what, from payer sources? The answer to your question 30 minutes later. So, no, it's, I, I love it, man. That's why I love talking to you. But so, so like, okay, by the way, I'm fully bought in. I mean, I, I, the example you used, I've now, I just can't get out of my head. Like, you know, you, you walk into a restaurant, they don't ask you what credit card they're, you're using, right? Like I, it's stuck in my head now. Um, I know every business is different. I know that. I know every practice is different and I, I get that. Right. But, but like, what do you say 
what do you say to the average practice owner? Like, like again, knowing that everything's nuanced and, and all that, right? Putting that aside for a minute, if we were just sitting here with a whiteboard and we said, okay, listen, that first call, when Paul calls with that low back pain, that call is going to be probably 45 seconds, that first interaction he has with you. If we were just drawing that 45 seconds out on a whiteboard, what segments would you break it into? Sure. Like, I think, I think sure. I'm going to, let me answer it how I think you're going to answer it. And well, let's see if I'm me. right you or wrong. Me because I have the segments I, for it. Tell me. I, yeah, I think I, I imagine that the first third of the call is just establishing rapport and echoing back why they're calling. Amen. I think that's the number one. I think we'll that all that number one. Yeah. I have a I have a one word. The one word I use for that, and which I love this word. Everybody goes, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "No, it's just simple acknowledgement." Yeah, there you go. And then the second the second um, uh, segment, second fifteen second segment is is okay. When do you want to do this? You know, no. and and it's just no. Okay. No. All right. I need. All if right. I'm take over. Take over. If I'm going to sell you something, Paul, and Lowe's knows this too, how can I help you? Right. Oh, I'm working on. Right. It, by the way, this, this is a great example, and I love it. My um, when coffee competes with Kell book that I told you about, this is in there. They they man, they talk about walking into a Home Depot. I think they said Home Depot. Right. This is that whole drill conversation. Right. Oh, how can I help you? Oh, I'm looking for a drill. Well, if I'm on commission, well, I don't sell. Them. You know what I mean? I'm, we're going to get mm -hmm. to the why, the how. So acknowledgement. Number two is your problem to be solved, which, by the way, dr buying a drill, scheduling a PT, no difference, my friends, no difference. I want your problem. I have low back pain. Oh, or by the way, because I acknowledge, I'm going to say, Paul, I understand you have low back pain. Here's what I need from you next. And we do help people with low back pain. Oh, we do have drills, right? We could run these conversations parallel and we get to the same space. By the way, and I guarantee you that dude, if I'm running on commission in Home Depot, just spent 50 more dollars on a drill than he would have if just here's the drills. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but, but so like, I need, but, the, but I need like, the problem to be solved, right? Which is I can't yeah. go to the gym without pain, Jerry. And I can't wake up without pain, Jerry. That is not low back pain. That's a problem to be solved. Ah, okay. So let me just make sure I play this back right. So it's really just establish that rapport, and then that fifteen. So again, if this because if this was a hypothetical forty-five second call, hypothetical, first fifteen seconds is is rapport, echo my name, echo the low back pain. I think what you're saying is the second fifteen seconds is really about drilling a little bit deeper. What what does that mean? Oh, you're waking up, sleep, you know, waking up, hurting. Da da da. I think that's what you're saying. 100%. And then what's that third segment? You only got 15 seconds left. What's that? Yeah. So the third set, well, look, let me bundle two things into that 15 seconds and because you can do this. And if you listen to calls with me and we break this down, it's very doable. And this third part came later. As I started to develop these conversations, I was looking for proof. Well, the proof exists in our own research. People's outcomes align with their expectations. And I'm going to say that's more than just healthcare. So what I want is your problem, Paul. So yeah, Jerry, I'm having a little back pain at the gym and I can't get up. Oh, what have you done for it recently that has helped you? And that answer is going to tell me what you expect to help you. You're also going to tell me what didn't help you. And I'm going to bold that because if you walk in the door and we do the shit that didn't help you and you told me it didn't help you, you ain't coming back. So I want, I want acknowledgement. Then I want a problem and expectation. Last third is I have to sell an expert and tell you what you'll get for your time, money, and energy with that expert. And we're done. We're done. I love the way you broke this down. Yeah. 15, 15, 15. Acknowledge, build that rapport, problem expectation, and then align them with the expert. And by the way, telling them what they get will get with the expert. It's the same across all businesses. Don't tell anybody. That's my big dirty. Mm. That's my little secret. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. And, and, um, Okay, so so this is really fascinating, and so if you're willing to entertain me here a little longer, so let's tell uh, a drill, right. man. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. So 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 chances are that um, you know now you've booked me for an appointment for tomorrow, and I'm just pumped because like God, you're gonna solve my problem. You've you know you've you've really like you know got me in there. All right, so I come in. Um, what should that experience look like, you know, in terms of like, like, should you solve my problem before you schedule me for all six visits or like, what does that look like? What should it look like for me? I just so walked this, in this now. This is where I'll start to differ from the other people. And right. And I don't claim to have the only, pro I don't claim to have the right process. I claim to have a process that works consistently. 
And that's the deal here, right? We want consistency. So by the way, you know what's funny, Paul? I, I got to go back a little bit. I love the fact that you said, great, I feel good. You're going to solve my problem. Guess what? I'm never going to tell you on that first phone call. I'm not going to tell you we're going to solve your problem, but you heard it. I have an expert for you, Paul. They've helped people just like you. That's what I want. I want you walking, hanging up the phone going, man, I called the right place. They're going to help me. They're going to help me solve my problem. Whatever you say next, that's what I want. I want you building the story in your head so that when you arrive, when you arrive, the conversation continues, right? And this is where people miss out because when Paul walks in the door of the typical clinic, they treat you like some fucking homeless dude that just walked off the street and is asking for fucking money out of their pocket. And you're like, I called here. I gave you everything. There's a stack of paperwork. Please fill this out and tell us everything you already told us. And we're going to ask you, by the way, when you get in the room, you're going to do it all again. So just take that current one. So it has to be a continuation of the story. So when you walk in, my team used to greet you and say, Paul, my name is whatever, Becky, Billy, who was ever at the front desk. We've been looking forward to seeing you today. Here's what I need from you. All I need is your insurance card and your insurance, uh, sorry, and your ID. I'm going to make a copy of both of those. In the meantime, why don't you have a seat and I'm going to bring some paperwork to you. By the way, on that first phone call, I primed you for the paperwork and I told you exactly why you're going to get the paperwork. So they sit down with you. They show you and refer back to the first phone call on that paperwork. And by the way, none of this, everybody's like, oh my God, it's going to take so much time. And I'm like, do you know how much time you're wasting? So it's a continuation so that, let me take it one step further, Paul, before you ask. When your provider comes out and greets you by name, they're going to greet you with your goals. And what's the first thing they do when you go back in the room with them? They're going to say, so, Paul, I know when you spoke to our intake team that they shared some information with you. I have it all here. So what I want to do just briefly is recap what they've already told you. And I want to tell you what, what I'm going to deliver today. It's going to be exactly what they told you. I just want your brain aligning going, holy shit, they talk. Holy shit, this is about me. Holy shit, I'm getting exactly what they told me I get. And that's where they're going to start from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, so, you, and again, I don't want to cut you off here, but like, so now I've had, I'm going through the treatment with you. Talk to me about walking out of there. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, well, hold up. I, you let, sold let me go back to the first question. I sell the first visit. This is a mistake being made, right? People have no idea what the cost is going to be. People have no idea if you're going to check their insurance. They have no idea of this. And then you tell them you want to schedule them out for 12 visits on the first phone call. I learned this firsthand. It took me a while. One day, I just got kicked inside of the head, figuratively. I was on a call going, I just told this person it's going to be a $1,500 visit when really the first visit is $150. And I stepped back. And this is, by the way, it was verified in my book, my favorite book. And yes, it's my favorite book because a lot of it confirmed my biases, is that you got to sell the next step in the journey. This is where people do not sell the outcome. Here's the biggest takeaway. Everybody, it's everywhere. Sell the outcome, sell the outcome. I'm like, sell the outcome that 30 other people are promising? You're selling the outcome and then you got to back it up and go, this is how the journey is going to go with us. So we're selling the journey to the outcome. And on that first phone call, we sell the first visit, Paul. And you asked me that. All I'm doing is selling the time and the deliverable with the expert on Thursday at 1030 in that hour visit. At the, but I prepped you for what's going to happen. At the end of that, you're going to get your plan of care, Paul. Let me tell you what that means. That is your journey back to the gym pain-free and out of that morning pain. Your expert will take all that information they gathered, all the testing, and they will put your journey in front of you. They will talk about frequency, how often, how long it's going to take, treatment services, all of it with you. That's what, hmm. and by the way, I don't say this part, but that's what you're investing your time, money, and energy on Thursday. So now at the end of that visit, it is the provider, the expert's time to lay out that plan of care and get agreement. And by the way, I call that cell cycle. Cell cycle number one, front desk, cell cycle number two, provider. And they are going to pitch you on your plan of care. And if they hand you a package deal, don't ask me about packages. I don't know if you've heard about them. We're not going to, you, you'll really trigger me. 
right? So at the end of this, I have to make this, we made this all about you. So I have to tell you how this planet cares about you, right? And I've got to get agreement on that along with you understanding your cause from this. I, I find this so fascinating. Be, so because, I am. Um... Because you've heard it before. Because it's similar to everything else. Tell me how this is any different than anything else. Well, well that's my that's my point. It's not. It's it's like um, I got a, a buddy of mine that owns a couple of um, Chick Fil A franchises. Oh, well, here we go. My and, favorite. And I mean, it's one of my favorite books right up here, dude. The, yeah, I bought a book it, yeah. from the Chick Fil A marketing guy. It was written by the marketing guy. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. You know, he. Uh, I don't pretend to know everything about his business, but he gave me a little walk around the you know the the the, the franchises a couple of months ago, and it's fascinating. They have. Um, he's in one of the newer builds. They have like new uh, architecture and the way they drive. I think, I think we have a brand but, new one here in Philly, by the way. Yeah, and it's what, what's really fascinating is like, um, he said something to me at one point. Like, um, we were standing like right in the in the back there, like behind the counters, and he was like, "Look, from this, from from any location behind the desk, so like you know the the registers out there and the the drive throughs over here." He's like. From anywhere on this side of the experience, you will always be able to see how long somebody's been waiting for an order. There's there's screens hidden from customer view that tell you what the average wait time is, what the lo- the, the latest order is, da, da da da, and it's all designed with the customer in mind. Because really, I, I he said something to me, and I don't know if this is like the official. I don't know if this is like the official Chick Fil A mantra or whatever, but he's like he said something like. You know, the important thing to understand here as we look at, I was like, man, this is a lot of like infrastructure. How much are you paying in this and CapEx and all that? He's like, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that like the 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 people come here, uh, um, they come here because of, because we are here to like make sure we respect their time. He said something like that. He's like, we're in the business of respecting their time. Ooh, we happen to sell yeah, food or something oh, like that. Man, dude. And, and and I don't know, that, again, I don't know that that's like Chick-fil-A's official line, but as a franchise owner, he's got like seven or eight of these locations or something. He was like, yeah, we're in the business of respecting our, our, our customers' time. We happen to sell burgers. And um, I just thought it was really fascinating because it, it turns out I can't recall the last time I really had to wait in a drive through <laughs> you know? Um, and anyway, it's just, just really fascinating because what you're talking about, you're right, isn't any different. But I guess here's the cynical question I have, or maybe the somewhat hey, sarcastic can, can, question. Can I like, insert something right there, Paul? Because I want yeah, people go. to understand, you, you can be in the same business and differentiate yourself, right? Chick-fil-A is a type product delivered on quickly. In and out, I would say, is a type product delivered fresh. So their claim is freshness. You will wait. And God bless America, dude. I swear to God, in and out wants the long drive-in line because that says, holy shit, I got to stop. And it's so funny when you drive down by an in and out and I don't see a long line, I think they're closed, right? So yeah. we can, within the same exact industry, because I want to say this for healthcare, you can differentiate yourself in this way and be insanely successful serving your community. There are people that want quick. There are people that want fresh. There are people who will wait. There are people who want one-on-one care. There are people who want group care. It don't try to push everybody. This is understanding your ideal client. Chick Fil A understands their best paying customers. It's kind of it's kind of like Chipotle too. Now that you say that, because Chipotle has all these signs when you're standing in line. It says um, it says something like, "Please don't mind the wait. We don't like to microwave food or something." It says something yeah, like that, right? right? And they're really appealing towards the freshness, which right? is different so than like Baja Fresh, freshness. which is like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is a great you know, example. You got Chipotle. By the way, if you offered me a Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, or an In-N-Out burger, I'd be like, flip a coin off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting, just on a random note here, um, years ago, um, excuse me, when I first started angel investing in a lot of tech startups, um, I didn't really know what I was doing. Arguably, I still don't know what I'm doing, but but anyway. Uh, in my office, you know, one of the things I got really sick and tired of is like telling... so. Let me step back. Most founders in the tech world are overly technical. Like they're just way too technical. Like, you know, they build a better widget and then wonder why nobody cares that it's a better widget. Cares, right? Right. All right. So what I did uh, when I, in my, one of my offices uh, now 15 years ago, almost was um, I took one of the conference rooms and changed out the glass. So as opposed, you know, like most offices, they have like a little, so uh, this, con- this particular conference room had, um, uh, t- if you can imagine a rectangle, it had like uh two sides of glass. And so what I did was 
one side that faced the outside windows, I left as glass so that it still doesn't, it looks, you know, it looks out into the wild or whatever. And then the other window, I switched to one-way glass. And then what I would do is like when founders would come over and like, hey, I want to raise money for my thing. I'd say, well, what do you sell? And they'd say, oh yeah, I sell X. And I'd say, okay, well, hang on, hang on just a second. Well, we would actually, way back when in Silicon Valley, we would actually, our front desk manager would actually stand out on the street corner with $25 um, Starbucks cards. And she would basically pick random people and say, hey, for 25 bucks, uh, this little card, can you just come up for 15 minutes on the hour? And um, we'd just like you to show you a website and we'd just love for you to tell us what you're thinking out loud. And I'd have these technical founders sit on the outside of that one-way window right after they've said what they think they sell. And I'd put some random person in this room. I'd project the website out on the on the wall and I'd say, talk to me about what you think you see here. Just, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. And then all of a sudden you see this cognitive disconnect. The founder's like, oh my God, I thought I was making X. And the, and the, and the you know, the, the random person on the street's like, I don't know what this is, right? And I think my point is, is that, Somewhere along the way, it seems very similar here where healthcare providers and practice owners forgot what business they're in. Dude, 100%. Let's or maybe they back. didn't even know in the first place. Let's go back to, so we talked about Chick-fil-A. We talked about in and out Burger. We talked about Chick-fil-A understanding, right, that it was a time component because I'm going to insert this back in there because that's the person with the money in the pocket that's going to drop in the hand across from them. And I don't think... I'm going to say I believe this, but it's more than a belief. It plays itself out every day is that the disconnect and the dissonance between who actually is my customer in healthcare is right. So let's go back to this. Let's go back to your Chick-fil-A example. And I'm not picking on Chick-fil-A because anybody. Right? So someone with Medicaid calls, you build up this whole mental picture. They can't afford this. They won't be here. They won't do anything. And you don't care. By the way, which is so funny because when someone calls with the best insurance, you still have no fucking idea until you check benefits. So, so we we just build this. We, we have built up so many by. We've allowed it. The leaders of it. Everybody has allowed this. The business owner you just referred to, who has lost sight of what they've created and who they're serving. And I'm not on some spiritual track here. I'm not a spiritual person. So we ain't going down no. I'm not talking about Sunday right? This is not a spiritual thing. It's like you lost focus. Oh, I'm here to help people. Well, why, why do you start with the insurance question, right? We're quality care. You know, this is the action speaking louder than words thing, right? I think, you know, as it's, it's interesting, like when you th think about this, it's really just kind of reminding people that we're all kind of sales and marketing companies and we oh, just happen Jesus to Christ. provide something else. Oh, you just lost right? like 300 customers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in healthcare, Probably, right? I don't know. Right? You know what I mean? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, you, <laughs> look, we, you and I, uh, we've only known each other a couple months, but, uh, you know, I don't have to go out on a limb here uh, when I say that you strike me as the kind of guy that, you know, doesn't pull any punches here. So let's talk about numbers. What's the... Obviously, you're going to have some clients of yours that are like just going to fight you tooth and nail. And eventually you're like, hey, we're not a good fit. See ya. Right. But then on the other side, you got some clients that are like, Jerry, let's do this thing. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Rip it up. Let's roll. Just high level. What sort of revenue increase do you normally see by just getting unromantic about how you make your money as a, as a practice owner? Like, are we talking 20% increase in revenues or profitability or are we talking something different? Here's the problem. My clients don't, or sorry, people in healthcare don't necessarily. So I talk top line, by the way, Paul, just for the okay. record. I really talk bottom line because yep. I, I'm a revenue guy. And seriously, I say this, right? We can come, there's all kinds of different business models and people have been successful. I am a revenue solves problems, right? So I come from, people go, hey, and I say people, people okay i want to see your expenses and they start making excuses i go oh i'm sorry you got me confused just put them down i'm not judging one line of this i don't care if you got your vet bill in there i don't care i'm going to help you make generate the money you need to meet your expenses every month plus more right this is your world 
by the way, you took the risk. You created this. I'm not going to judge one fucking line of this. I'm going to make sure we have the model, revenue model in place to do this. So I do top line. But let me give you a number real quick. I, I was on a call with the client this morning. Seriously, I got this how you know it's important, people, in numbers. I got my phone out. <laughs> the old school calculator. I love it. So we got 2,200. I'm going to talk it out. Visits a month. We have decreased his, we've increased his arrival rate by 5%. Okay, so 22 times 0 0.05 equals 110. Oh, this is going to be easy math. I love easy math. He's collecting. Hold on. Hold on. God, where did I write it down? He's collecting. I'm going to make a number up. Yeah, now I got to make it easy. He's collecting $80 a visit. So here's what we just did for him monthly. I'm not a math guy. I've just increased his monthly by $9,000 a month. So damn near $100,000 a year in revenue by doing what? Changing his first phone call. We've done nothing downstream, by the way. So there's an example from this morning, right? I have another client. By the way, this is what's fun. Paul. You say, what's the impact? I give people these numbers before I work with them. I had a client. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this dead horse till it, it could, whatever happens with it. I had a potential client, not a client. And I ran some numbers and I showed them. Now, mind you, this isn't what I told them I could make them. I, I want them to see the potential, right? What is your potential? You see, they had all their numbers, 80% arrival rate, right? I'm like, okay, so we got a 20%. And I don't even say we got 20% to work with. That's unrealistic. I'm like, we got about 10% to work with. So I ran the numbers. They were leaving $1.7 million of current business on the table every year. So I'm like, this isn't marketing spam, people. This is money in the business. This is the joker in the dark night lighting the fucking pile of cash on fire. And we all sat there and cringed. And I'm like, motherfucker, you do that every month. Sorry, I'm getting bad now. I'm like, dude, you are doing this every month. You are piling up cash and you're lighting it on fire. I mean, that dark night, there's so much in that dark night with Heath Ledger every time oh, yeah. I learn a new life lesson. And so 1.7, I said, I'm not claiming I'll get you 1.7, but I will tell you I'll get you 900. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll split the difference with you. I'll get you $850,000 a year back. I'm like, what would you do with that? I'm like, well, you're going to give me a chunk of it. And by the way, chunk, I, I'm going to say wedge. I'm like, I'm not greedy, man. I am not greedy. You don't have to give me the whole thing. You know, here's, here's the other sad thing about healthcare. They're so, sh they're so short-sighted. It's hard to get people to look six months, nine months, 12 months down the road. And I bet you see it in your side of it too. I had to change my pitch to, I'll help you short-term. I had to put that in there because nobody cared about it. They, they'll claim, right? They'll talk long-term, but when it came time to pull the trigger, they tell you what it's going to do them, them next month. I'm like, Right. Yeah. I think I think that well, this could be an entirely different episode, but I think that a lot of practice owners, just like a lot of entrepreneurs actually in every industry, don't understand the most basic thing about money. That profit is not cash and cash is not profit. And and so uh, you know, you can kind of take that wherever you want, but the point is though, is that like basic finance education is lacking. In, in, in every industry, not just healthcare, but in every industry. Oh, more so. Um, but, but, but yeah, we definitely see lacking. it. Business education finance is lacking more. And it's this disconnect, right? It's this agency effect. It's because I hire billers, by the way. Right, 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 right. What, um, <laughs> I want to, so I want to make sure this episode doesn't go too long today. But, uh, so, okay, so, you know, what you've done there, by the way, is confirmed what, what we kind of see, which is that it doesn't take big changes to result in big dollars. Yeah, right. Here I we think, go. Like, because like, like, now you've confirmed it. Like, yes. uh, yeah, because see, that's the thing is like, I'll show people our data. You know, we publish it all there and people see it. And I'm like, man, look, do the math yourself. If you go from X to Y, it, it's just a, you know, five, five less you know, cancels or whatever, isn't just five more bucks. It's a lot more. Now multiply that out day by day by day. And now you've confirmed it with a separate data source. You know, you and I, we don't have any business link or anything like that. And it's just your data confirms ours and ours confirms yours. And I think that that's, it, 
ultimately what it really confirms is that the the real the real problem for healthcare uh, practice owners is the practice owner. If you can't By the way, just which, get your head wrapped around which yeah. everything I've shared with you today, everything anybody will ever hear come out of my mouth, I made that mistake and I made it for months, if not years. I'll own it right now. So let's let's throw that. And Thomas, put that in the fucking every fucking show notes. Jerry Durham <laughs> states he made every fucking mistake he can talk about it. But I did it over and over. And this is what baffles me. I'm like, people, I'm not making the story up. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. And Lord knows I ain't trying to make me feel better. You got to know that this is like going to confess. And I grew up Catholic. This is like confession for me, man. I, I got to own this. Luckily, I got. But I tell people, I you do not need to make my mistakes. Please, you'll make your own. But don't make mine. Yeah. Because it was yeah. so fucking basic. I look back and I'm embarrassed when I say some of this shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm curious. Like here's a left field question for you. What um Willie Mays if you had a magic, baseball player ever, and I'm not gonna argue with anybody. Go on. What like what is it? It I don't know how to ask this question. So, you know, um one of the things that investors do when they help, like when I think about our portfolio company, I, I always tell people it's like, look, we don't we don't actually change the outcome of the company because if you you know, you want to crash it, you're going to crash it. Money just accelerates whatever's already happening. Yeah, right, right, right. But, but one of the things we do do is that, you know, once we're on your, your ownership table, um, we're going to kind of, now that our interests are aligned, we're going to kind of tell you what not to do. Because I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what not to do. And so I guess where I'm going with this is, is like, you know, if you think about most healthcare businesses today, right? Uh, Tell me if I'm wrong here. Most of them are self-funded. They're bootstrapped. Maybe they got like Uncle Timmy's money or Aunt Sally's 100%. money to maybe Probably get kickstarted. Probably 98% of them. 98%. Right. And if they make it through that gauntlet of a couple of years and, and survive without losing their sanity, then maybe, maybe, maybe they get interesting enough for private equity to roll them up or maybe they sell it to somebody else or whatever. But I can't help but wonder, I wonder if like these practice owners would make fewer mistakes if they had oversight from the beginning with like a professional set of investors. I, I don't know. Like, I guess from your perspective, you know, you, you, it seems to me the summary of your life story is, is you built the practice, you figured out how to like really make some money on it. Well, and now like your point, it's like I confession. I money and figured out, I had no idea how I got here. I had no idea what we were doing and I had to own, it wasn't a business by definition. Uh-huh. Yep. I didn't understand so, the connectedness between the marketing, the sales, the retention. I didn't understand the impact of everything we talked about up to this minute. I did not understand for like the first six to eight years of my, so I call here's, it practice, here's where by I'm, the way, Paul, it was a practice at that point. So here's, here's where I'm going with this, by the way, you know, my, my other hat that I wear, I do a lot of angel investing, early stage investing, all that to the tune of hundreds of new investments per year. And one of the things we do with that is um, uh, we have this part of our business units. Uh, we have one of them is called an accelerator. And I describe it as the modern day business school. So for example, um, you're going to give us 5% of your company. In exchange, we're going to give you, in this case, like for the, in the tech world, we're going to give you probably about a hundred grand to do that. But now you have to go through the curriculum and you have to like do, if we tell you to jump, you're going to jump. You're going to ask how high, da, 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 da. And we call it the modern day business school, where the goal here is, is within 12 weeks, to teach you everything you need to know and make you profitable and kick you out the door. Because if you haven't learned how to fly, how to fly in 12, uh, 12 weeks, we've already lit that 100K on fire, to your point of Batman. And it makes me wonder if there should be something similar. Like, you know, maybe this is a question for another show, but like, maybe Strata at some point creates an accelerator program where we provide the initial 50K of of, of, I'm making that number up, right? But we provide the initial 50K and the catch is you're going to business school with us and not like stuffy business school. You're definitely not going to get an MBA, whatever. But but um, by the end of 12, uh, 12 weeks, uh, you're either crashed and burning and you've saved your, 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 you've gotten your time back. You can go back to work or whatever. <laughs> and in the best case, you're making more money than you know what to do with in 12 weeks. And you're starting I to build towards you what you want. Here, you, you want my take on that? 
Yeah, go. I believe you'd have so many applicants on the first pass you couldn't take them. I uh, see that now the blood sucking capitalist is getting excited here, man. <laughs> so, so there is, there is a, there is a need on the new business owner side for information. There is a lack of quality information on the other side. Bingo. Bingo, right there. 99% of the people in this country that are giving startups advice and business advice have no, uh, they, I'm sure they have great intentions, but they have no qualifications Welcome to actually to be giving anybody Welcome advice. to healthcare. Yeah. Welcome to healthcare. Yeah. Remember yeah. where I started all this. Healthcare doesn't like people from outside of healthcare. And we have, we come out, right? Remember, we, we have this, we'll go further back. We come out with big egos. So originally people didn't like to ask for help. And I'm finding more and more people will ask for help. But man, what they're drawn to, I'm like, you are just, you're, you're buying a new problem and you're buying a new problem that there is no solution for, right? And this is, I'm going to say this out loud. Thomas, are you recording? I'm going to say this out loud. <laughs> people are choosing their information source. I'm going to leave this broadly because it truly is information sources and education and knowledge sources based on payer model, my friend. We doubled all the way back to the beginning of this call. So here we are, here we are, here we are, right? We talked five below, we talked in and out, we talked Chick-fil-A, we talked Lewis. They, none of those people care how the fuck you're gonna pay. They wanna make sure you understand why you should value them and then you will choose to pay them. Five below, every one of those. Healthcare says, I'm going to start a cash pay model. I'm going to start a Medicare model. I'm going to start a hybrid model. I'm going to start an out of network model and do what? Physical therapy. I'm like, why don't you just give me the money? Give me the money your cousin gave you. Give me the money. Your wife said, yes, I'm getting on the phone with her because she's going to tell you no tomorrow. Your husband told you, yes, I'm going to get on the phone with him tomorrow because he's going to tell you, no, you will fail. It will take you longer. It will take, cost you more money and it will cost you more energy. Then if you just flipped it, nobody, nobody comes to me saying, I want to start a business. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I did it the fucking other way, man. And I did it wrong. And I paid for it. the time, the money, the energy. Dude, at 56 years old, 30 years later, man, if I could go back and do one thing differently, I would have learned the fucking business I was getting in. Oh, no. It wasn't I would have learned the business I'm getting in. I would have learned business. And I don't mean an MBA. I would have, dude, that tipping point, EO, you just described, right? I invested in EO. I went and looked for it. I invested my time, money, and energy in there. That was such a tipping point that probably so many things I've shared today could be tied back. I shared with you my best, most impactful book, probably one I talked to ever in what the work I do now. Little did I know she was an EO member in my chapter, right? You know, it just, the, the time with the business, the business, it's not a healthcare business. It's a fucking business that delivers healthcare. It's not a Chick-fil-A business. It's a business that delivers Chick-fil-A, right? That's what's missing. And that's what you just defined. That's what we need. Yeah. I'll fucking Let stand up you and cheerlead for you. Actually, I want to be on the payroll, but we can talk about it. I was going to say, I'm going to sucker you into this thing because I, uh, I don't know how to run the inside of the practice. You do. Um you can put that on the show so that people can keep us, uh, uh, keep me accountable, by the way, Thomas, if you want. Um, that right. is the one thing. Uh, that is the uh, one thing. I, I, it's valuable to have someone, right? So if you want to start a Chick-fil-A, you're going to talk to a Chick-fil-A person? Well, yes. You got to start a healthcare practice? You want to talk about someone who's done it? Yes, right? But that's not the end of it. All right, Jerry, final question for you for today's episode. I asked the same question to Tony Meritato. I'm going to tell you his answer after this. I'm curious where yours is. Let's say I take all your money. It just fell off a ba the back of a truck, you've got nothing. You've got to start over from scratch uh, in, in the end of 2023. How long does it take you to get your practice back to big boy money? Whatever you define as big boy money. You don't have to tell me what that number is, but how long does it take you to get back off the ground and, and make that money, knowing what you know today? Oh, I, I, and mind you, I'm, think, I'm thinking back, dude, I could probably cut it by 60, 70% of the time. I could probably do it 70% faster. So let, let, let me just think about this. Because here's the problem, the big point money, right? So yeah, all, everything lines up. I can get I can get the work. I, I think I could be there 24 months. And I'm all probably right, now, being uh... cautious, right? Because again, I, I want to 
right? Because there's too much history, right? So I'm gonna, I'm I, gonna I just tell this for, thing. For, for, for the record, I just want to point out before I tell you Tony's answer, you guys heard it here first. This is the first time I've ever seen Jerry actually be conservative conservative in his estimate. <laughs> because Tony Maritato said with the same question, he's like, I think I could be there in three to six months. I love six it. Months I love it. I love it. I do. I, I, <laughs> I have a know, feeling you would be too, actually. I don't think it would take you well, 24 months. You know, months. my gut reaction was 12 months, dude. My gut was just, just give me, if you gave me 12 months, I'd, by the way, I'd, right back to what you said. You gave me 12. If I said, give me 12, it'd be because I think I could get there in nine or 10, right? And I'd want those two extra months. But yeah, I, I don't think, dude, when I see what some of my clients are doing from today, I, I stood in front of a group. I, I, th I think this will tie it all home. I stood in front of a group of third year DPT students. And sorry, but there's no more doom and gloom in a room than third year DPT students because they just see and they're being told by everybody, you're fucked. Oh my God, your debt, your everything. I stood in front of a group and I said, I'm going to pause and I'm going to be very purposeful on this. If you were to give me the opportunity to switch spots with you, I would take your spot today with all your debt, everything you have on the table, because my opportunity is so much bigger right now that I could take what it took me years before and I could accelerate it like crazy. And I said, so be very careful about what you wish for until you really understand what's out there in front of you. With, I did all this, and I say this from the side of, because I want people to understand, I did this all pre-internet. I did it all pre-social media. So when I see, right, ads were in the papers, I had this conversation. I'm not saying this as a guy who walked uphill both ways to school. I'm saying I understand both of it and why there can be 20-year-old millionaires in four weeks, right? And so there is something to be leveraged here. Every step, everything you can learn, there's something to be leveraged in your business that what that 20 year old, everybody says, fuck these kids. They don't understand. I'm like, oh my God, they're a millionaire. What do you mean? I want to learn from this. Yep. Kid. There's something here that I can take back yep. to my business. And I'm like, so I could accelerate it with your debt. Yeah. Thanks for listening to another episode of Strata Stories. Strata is a single EMR platform and revenue cycle management service for physical, occupational, and speech therapy practices that helps you achieve a 99.99% reimbursement rate. If you'd like to learn more about Strata and see how our EMR and RCM works, head over to stratapt.com to book a demo.